An artificial insemination program is an investment in the future of your herd. And there are three basic elements in learning to be successful in artificially inseminating cattle. They are having the mental commitment to learn, acquiring the basic skills, and gaining competence through repetition. Although artificial insemination is a manipulative skill, learning to do it requires concentration and mental commitment. Understand that learning the process may take longer than expected since it requires entirely new manual and perceptual skills. You can learn more quickly and confidently if you are given the basic skills for completing the task. While there is a great deal of variation between cows, learning the basic skills provides you with a step-by-step -step procedure to follow. The final element in learning to AI cattle is to repeat the procedure over and over in a variety of cows. Through repetition, you make the procedure your own and learn to adjust your procedure to be effective on every cow. This video will cover the basic female anatomy, artificial insemination technique, and tips to get the most out of your AI program. While well, artificial insemination is principally performing manual skills, familiarity with the reproductive anatomy of the cow is essential. The ideal training situation is to work with an excised reproductive system so you can familiarize yourself with the appearance, size, and feel of the various parts of the cow's reproductive system. With that in mind, this video is not intended to serve as an artificial insemination training program but as a training aid to be used in conjunction with a training program. It may also be used as a refresher for people who already know how to AI, but simply want to brush up on their skills. In the next couple of minutes, we will discuss the names and locations of the female reproductive organs. Keep in mind, there is a great deal of variation among cows and the relative size and location of the reproductive organs. The challenge is being able to recognize these differences and knowing how to successfully adjust to them. While not part of the reproductive tract of the cow, the rectum plays a vital role in the act of artificial insemination. The rectum is the posterior end of the large intestine. When there is an accumulation of feces in the rectum, forceful contractions of the muscle layers of the gut move in waves toward the anus and move the feces posteriorly. These contractions are called peristaltic contractions. In response to the peristaltic contractions and feces in the rectum, the anus opens reflexively to eliminate feces from the body. The vulva represents the external opening of the cow's reproductive tract and is situated directly below the anus. At the bottom of the vulva lips is a small mound of erectile tissue called the clitoris. The vulva opens into the vestibule, which extends anterior where it joins continuously with the vagina. In the floor of the vestibule, at its junction with the vagina, is a longitudinal slit. This slit opens into a blind pouch called the suburethral diverticulum and is located just below the opening of the urethra. The urethra runs forward below the vagina to the bladder. The vagina is a thin-walled, elastic, tubule structure continuous with the vulva vestibule. The very tough, elastic walls of the vagina are characterized by the longitudinal folds which provide for great stretching during mating and when a calf is being born. Cells in the vaginal wall, particularly closest to the cervix, secrete mucus which lubricates the organs during mating and calving. At the anterior end, the cervix protrudes into the vagina. Because of its thick, fibrous walls, it is easily distinguished by palpation, feeling like a piece of rubber hose. Numerous thick folds protrude into the cervical lumen, forming a series of tight rings of tissue. This narrow passage forms an obtrusive barrier between the vagina and the uterus. During estrus, there is copious mucus flow from the cervix. The uterus of a cow consists of two horns and a body. The whole organ is attached to the pelvic and abdominal walls by the broad ligament of the uterus. The uterine body of the cow is very small, averaging 5 eighths inches or 2 centimeters long. 
The uterine body is only the small area between the anterior end of the cervix and the internal uterine bifurcation. In younger, non-pregnant cows, each uterine horn extends anteriorly and curves downward into the pelvic cavity. In older cows, the horns may extend down into the abdominal cavity. Contractions of the muscle layers of the uterus facilitate transport of the spermatozoa after insemination. Each uterine horn narrows at its anterior tip and enters a small, twisting, and convoluted tubule called the oviduct. At its anterior most end, the oviduct opens up into the funnel-shaped infundibulum, which surrounds the ovary and acts as a catcher's mitt. It catches the freshly ovulated ova, or egg, and funnels it into the oviduct. When cows are inseminated, sperm travel through the uterus and up into the oviducts to populate or colonize the upper third of the oviduct. The ovaries are almond-shaped structures located at the anterior end of the oviducts. The ovaries are responsible for ova or egg production. As the female gonad, each ovary contains many thousands of eggs at the time of birth. Only a small fraction of these are used throughout the reproductive life of most cows. The right ovary has been shown to be more active than the left, with about 60% of ovulations occurring from the right ovary. Each ovum is enclosed in a fluid-filled ovarian follicle. This fluid-filled structure resembles a blister. When the follicle reaches its full size, the surface wall thins and ruptures, releasing the ovum from the follicle. This process is called ovulation. The ovum is picked up by the infundibulum and travels down the oviduct where fertilization occurs. After ovulation, the cavity left on the ovary fills in with a spongy to firm yellow colored tissue called the corpus luteum or yellow body. The corpus luteum reaches its maximum size about 10 days after ovulation. At about 14 to 15 days, it begins to shrink or regress. In addition to producing the ova, the ovaries produce the hormones which influence the reproductive status of the cow by regulating the reproductive cycle and secondary sexual characteristics. the hormones which influence the reproductive status of the cow by regulating the reproductive cycle and secondary sexual characteristics.